there. If I got it on, yep, there you go. Thank you. Well, you got through the bridge month, and next week, I guess Pastor Geisen's already here, beginning kind of behind the scenes ministry, but I just want to thank you for the privilege, the honor to work with you as a partner in the gospel, a month that flew by uh, for me. So I'll keep you in our prayers and and uh, just have to thank you for the uh, all that you've done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> and then uh, let's see R Terry's going to come up have a few announcements so good morning and thank you pastor and thank you Karen you beautiful starting song I love oh. it that was absolutely beautiful <laughs> thanks uh, a lot of exciting things going on we still have two Lenten suppers so just as a reminder that's Wednesday night 5.30 soup and sandwiches and oh you talk about desserts we got desserts and uh <laughs> you know then they follow that with the holding service at 6 30 and we get to hear some of our confirmation kids talk about what they've the projects they've been working on and boy i'll tell you that's another one that uh you know you, you'll be really really proud of uh, our confirmation kids as well follow that up with palm sunday now there we're only going to have one service at nine o'clock one service nine o'clock and we're hoping you can all join us afterwards we're going to have a brunch and all the, it's a free will offering, so the, the brunch will start probably around uh, 10 o'clock, it's right after the, uh, the first service, and, or the only service, and then uh, that'll be, the, the free will offering is all going, money's all going for our mission trip for the kids. So thank you, Rhonda. I'm you know, really here, love, I've gone on several mission trips, and I'll tell you, I'm glad I saw how many kids are going. It, I, I came back, and I mean, boy, it's, it's an experience, and it really it helps you grow in your faith. It really is amazing. So I, I really thank the kids that are all, the kiddos that are all going for that. Um, so follow that up with Palm Sunday, and then, okay, then, of course, then we have Easter, and then, you know, that'll be back to our normal uh, services at uh, 8.30 and, uh, what, 8 and 9.30. There we go. So, and then I personally, and I know all you do as well, you, uh, you maybe saw a few pies out there. So... Um, Please try to join us after the service day because we're going to we are celebrating for, with Pastor you. Dave. <laughs> Small little quick story. I got to know Pastor Dave. I was on the board of directors at Luther Manor for nine years. First time I walked in this door and I see Pastor Dave, we kind of look at each other like, "Whoa, wait!" You know. <laughs> yeah. So we we there was a real connection right away, and I knew this was going to be a great four weeks. And it, it, I can't believe how quickly good. this went. <laughs> but uh, talk about a great great. Uh, Bridge Pastor, uh, we've fun. been very, very fortunate, and I know you all applaud one. Let's, but let's do it again. Oh. You're, like, you're absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. I'm out of here. Thanks for your time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and then Ron, Rhonda had a, a quick <laughs> announcement. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just going to kind of follow up from what Terry just said. Um, Palm Sunday brunch, we're bringing it back. Um, the fellowship team is reorganizing. Um, Carolyn Bird and Kathy Schwey are heading that up. So for sure, if anybody is interested in helping to volunteer for that, um, it's a great organization to help out the church and to have fun things happen. And um, we, are ha we have a sign-up sheet for the Sunday brunch um, out by... Um, where you grab your um, communion cups and stuff. We just need a, a food count. We have no idea how many people are actually going to show, so we really need a food count for that. And um, it's going to help to support the mission trip. So we appreciate everybody's support, and um, it's a free will donation. So it's going to be Sunday directly after the service. Thanks. Thank you. And then before we get started, just had a few kind of additional announcements. Uh, the sister of Diane uh, Noy, 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 Noy uh, her sister, her sister Deb Jewers uh, passed away, and we just want to keep them in prayers. And Greg is her husband who uh, is grieving. And the funeral for uh, Deb is going to be Wednesday at six o'clock, yeah. and then. Uh, Mike Rell, uh, he donated a kidney of his to his friend Dan, and the family just asked that we keep him in our prayers. He does have a Facebook site kind of describing the journey that brought him to 
this uh, heroic uh, uh, decision to help his friend. It's called a kidney donation, a kidney donor journey, if you want to go online and, and read of that. And then Beth Knudsen's uh, mother uh, passed away, and a uh, barren uh, family mother also passed away. So please keep them in your prayers. Uh, please stand for our confession and forgiveness. And recalling our baptism, we begin our service in the name of our triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who makes a way in the wilderness, who walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Let us take a moment to reflect upon our lives and confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and again, over and over, and gathers you under the wings of his love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. You may remain standing. Our hymn is 328. 328, restore in us, O oh God. Lord be with you. And let us join together in praying this fourth Sunday in Lent, uh, the prayer for the day. Let us pray. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> and as a way of uh, thanking Karen and Sandy, the choir, all you for singing, I asked if I could sing a, a Lenten song. One that reminds us that Jesus humbled himself, could have called 10,000 angels, and set himself free, but he knew that was the price that he had to pay for your and my salvation. They bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They led him through 
the streets in shame. They spat upon the Savior, so pure and free from sin. They said, crucify him, he to blame. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called 10,000 died alone for you and me to the howling mob he yield he did not for mercy cry the cross of shame he took alone and when he cried it is finished he gave himself to die salvation's wondrous plan was done he could have called ten thousand angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone for you and me. Yes, he died alone for you and me. <laughs> My, when I saw the pies out there, I thought, we're ready for his, his singing. <clears throat> that was wonderful. Thank you, oh, Pastor. Thank you. My pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. The reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. One way to describe the gospel is the promise that in Christ everything is transformed into newness. All mistakes, all deliberate sins, all old history is reconciled with Christ's resurrection. This is Paul's strong message to the congregation in the city of Corinth. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the me message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made, him to be, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation as you are able.
uh, is, there it is, from the Holy Gospel of St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. It's a long parable, but one that I think uh, speaks to each of us. It says, now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in, in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who, went, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? And here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field and when he came and approached the house he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry, and the older son refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes. You killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> And grace to you and peace in our gracious God who reached out, blessed us with his love and goodness before we could even reach out, make ourselves worthy before him. Amen. So I was preparing the sermon uh, last week. I was already thinking about it. And on Sunday morning, I heard there was a Relay for Life uh, luncheon here at the church. And I just thought I'd stop down and uh, see if they needed any help, see if they had some free food I could knock <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, But as I was there, a woman came up, stranger, and she said, oh, you're the, the new pastor, the bridge pastor. And, and then she said, I was a member here at St. Luke, but during the pandemic when the church was shut down, she said, I felt the need to attend the church that was offering live worship. But then she went on and said, I came last Wednesday to the service, and she said it was like a homecoming. She said the members were so kind, so gracious, so warm in welcoming me. She may be back, but you did just like the, the father 
in this parable. You reached out with love. You're welcome. Uh, the wayfarer, uh, the one who left. And I think that's going to be a key for you as you move forward with Pastor Geisen. As I thought about this exciting time in your ministry, I <laughs> read this parable and with a few different thoughts that I never really uh, thought before. So I want to share some of those. First, it says uh, in the parable, this younger son, he gathered all that he had and then he traveled to a distant country. Hope you realize that's Pastor Josh and his family. Traveling is never easy, it's tiring, it's frightening to go to a distant land. So treat uh, Pastor Josh and his family with a lot of compassion and care. Realize uh, they made a big move. They left behind uh, security, family, fr or friends. I, I'm sure it's sin that they were aware and knew. But he traveled a distance to be here with you. And then it says when he spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. We haven't really had a, a famine here in our area. There's a drought. But these last two years, we've gone through some tough times with the pandemic and Pastor Josh and Florida, he experienced these difficult times. Like a famine, remember we worried about our food, would we, the stores run out? We're still experiencing supply shortages, essentials. Uh, people are unemployed. And so again, realize, you know, you're tired, you're worn out, but I'd say also give yourself a pat on the back. You got through a very difficult time, and it seems like our world doesn't take time to give God thanks and praise, but we got through it. We know it's not over. And Pastor Josh and his family endured. And during this time, you know, we tried our best. We all made mistakes. And uh, forgiveness is a gift we can bring as we begin anew. And then the son after he decides, I'm going back home, he comes up with this speech. Father, I have sinned against you, against heaven. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. Pastor Josh, while he is a man of faith and God, trained, received his Master of Divinity degree, he has experience in leading the flock I think like the prodigal, he's coming here to St. Luke, knowing, as you and I do, that we are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. And like that prodigal, he's coming uh, to say, we're saved not because of our righteousness, our holiness, but because we worship a merciful, forgiving Heavenly Father. So realize, that's what gives him the authority. Not his title, not his degree, but the same power you and I have, that we are sinners saved by grace. And then it says he's going to become a hired hand. I just want to say, you didn't hire Pastor Josh. You called him to be a, a worker amongst you, to be the shepherd of the flock. His call really came from, from God. And so I'd say, treat him uh, with respect and care, with love. That's due a uh, worker in God's kingdom, a partner in the gospel. You didn't cause his wife, his children, so treat them with care and compassion. And then it says, while well, the prodigal was still far off. His father saw him and was filled with compassion and ran and put his arms around him. I'm going to say I, I'm impressed how St. Luke, the council, 
the church before Pastor Josh has even uh, arrived. You've reached out to him, just like the father. You say, how can we help you during this move? How can we make the transition and ministry easier for you? How can we lay a foundation? You know, what can we do uh, as you, you arrive? You didn't wait for him to be here. You were proactive, and that's going to be a blessing unto Pastor Geisen and unto you as a congregation. You've expressed to him how grateful you are and thankful. And then I like what the father does to show that he's so grateful that his, his son has come back home. He says he put a robe on him. I know you've been collecting some uh, gifts and gift cards and some of those include, I think I just saw a winter hat uh, for one of the kids as they're coming from Florida. I think I heard you saying you're going to get them some uh, Packer gear and Bucks gear, Brewers gear. <laughs> you're thinking clothes. And I'm going to say something, say, well, Pastor, you don't wear your alb. And, and that's because as I looked at the... Uh, videos. I noticed Pastor Larry didn't, so I said, well, that must be a tradition, but uh, Pastor Josh probably will, will wear his alb as a, a sign of being a, a humble servant. And then it says, put it, he gave him a ring. And I'm going to say to you, there's a good idea. Give Pastor Josh a ring. <laughs> a text. An email. Call him up. Communicate. I know that's not what they were talking about. Maybe you can get a Bucks replica ring. <laughs> no, appreciate that. <laughs> but I'm going to say, give him a ring. You know, let him know your, your needs. Let him know your, your thoughts, your hopes, your fears of, of the ministry. Let him know your constructive criticism. And then give him a ring and let him know and his family, how appreciative and thankful you are that they are here. The father gave him sandals. Not sure if you have some shoes planned to give him, but I'll just say, Pastor Josh is going to be doing a lot of walking. Uh, he'll be visiting you at your homes. He'll be visiting the homebound, the shut-ins, people in the hospital. He'll be out uh, walking i uh, getting to know the neighbors. We'll be uh, there at, at funerals of family and loved ones. So again, just realize he's coming and we'll have some needs. And I know already your plan and how can we help him out. And then it says, get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. <laughs> I'm going to say to one month I was here, I know St. Luke is a good church at providing fellowship, <laughs> dinners, <laughs> meals. <laughs> I know I put on a couple pounds just during this uh, <laughs> one month. And my wife was like, well, what did you bring home tonight? <laughs> and she was thrilled. So just keep doing that. You know, you don't have to have the fatted calf, but uh, all your good meat uh, from Kathy and Tom and your soup and... And I know you have a celebration planned for Palm Sunday. And then it goes on and says, now we get to that one uh, who's always seems to be grumbling, uh, the older son. He hears the music and the dancing. And as I'm leaving St. Luke, I got to say the music ministry here, what a blessing. There were times I was tapping my foot, felt like getting up. Uh, <laughs> dancing. And uh, so thank you, Karen and Sandy and the choir members, and then the church that sings out so well with, with gratitude, with thanksgiving, with confession. Uh, keep doing that, lifting up a, a song of praise and, and gratitude for this exciting time here at St. Luke. And then the elder son, he becomes angry refuses to go in. You're going to have people in every church, in every group, every institution, 
People who instead of joining the celebration are angry, bitter, saying, well, you know, I wasn't recognized as much as you're welcoming and recognizing Pastor Josh. They feel slighted, not appreciated. So realize that's going to happen. You can focus on that person and their uh, complaints, their negativity, or as the father did. You can listen to them. You can explain this is why we're happy and celebrating. You can invite them. Come on, join in this, this time of God's blessings. And then you're going to just have to say, I did my best. You'll have to handle it uh, as God directs you. And then I end, two more thoughts. It says that older son says, you never gave me a goat. <laughs> now, you know, Pastor Josh coming from Florida, he's had the goat, <laughs> right? Greatest of all time, Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> he might be a Tampa Bay fan. <laughs> and uh, you're going to have to say, we don't have the goat. But we got the boat, the best of all times, Aaron Rodgers, right? <laughs> we got the Bucks, the world champions, and we got the Brewers who are always <laughs> get our hopes up and are in contention. But again, he's, he's leaving behind, I'm sure, a lot of uh, good memories. Uh, and uh, eventually they'll learn uh, that proud heritage of our uh, sport. Uh, teams. And then it ends, I think, reminding us the parable, what it's really about when Jesus says, uh, this brother of yours was dead and he has come to life. He was lost and is now found. I think that's what we're really celebrating, why you spent so much time with the mission exploration team, the call committee, with the Pastor Larry as you lifted this up in prayer and interviewed different candidates in the Synod, put so much effort in. It's so that you can ha now have a shepherd of the flock who's going to remind us that our brother Jesus, he died on Calvary's cross. He was laid in the tomb, but on Easter morn, he rose triumphant. Our sins are forgiven and away into heaven has been opened up. And that as his followers, you and I are called to reach out to those who are yet lost in sin and darkness and to help them come to know the Father's love and to be a welcoming presence in this community of, of Slinger and neighboring towns. Again, thank you for the great privilege. I am a sinner saved by grace, and you welcomed me, and thank you. Let us pray. Lord, <laughs> we all know we have our moments where we turn and fall short and are enticed by the things of this world, and you always welcome us back. Help us to remember to share that good news that Jesus died for our forgiveness, rose triumphant so that we can come through the dark valley and come unto that heavenly mansion that you've prepared for us and are ready to welcome us unto eternity. In Jesus, our Savior, amen. And as you're able, I'll invite you to stand for our hymn 608, 608. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. So the
Now let us join together in confessing our faith in our triune God according to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we lift up our, our prayers and our prayer response will be, merciful God, receive our prayer. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this season of Lent that allows us to examine our lives, to repent of our sins, and return unto your open arms, your compassion, love, and grace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And Heavenly Father, I give thanks for the honor and privilege to have served as the bridge pastor here at St. Luke. As Pastor Geisen begins his ministry next Sunday, continue to bless the staff and the members of St. Luke so that it can continue to be a welcoming place and a blessing unto others. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And Lord, Prince of Peace, we pray for the people of Ukraine. Guide world leaders so that your promise that one day weapons will be made into plowshares and nations will learn no more of war. Lord, merciful God, receive our prayer. And Father, be with those who are, are sick and homebound ill. We pray for Nancy and Larry and Susan, for Paul, for Lyle, for Ron, for Paul and Daryl, for Judy, for Larry, for Joe, for Judy, Juanita, uh, and Beth. Uh, be with them. Keep them in your loving care. Uh, merciful God, receive our prayer. And Lord, we uh, also pray for uh, Mike Ralph as he recovers after donating a kidney for his friend Dan. Abide with him. And we pray for uh, Diane, the loss of her sister Deb. Uh, we pray for, let's see, I know we have uh, Jeff Barron at the passing away of his mom and then Beth Knudsen as she grieves uh, the loss of her mom. Bring unto all who are mourning and grieving the peace that the world cannot give that is ours in your victory 
over sin and death on Easter morn. Merciful God, receive our prayer. And Lord, as spring comes in the season of planting, we pray for your blessing upon the farmers. Uh, give them favorable weather. Give them affordable uh, supplies and seed, equipment, and provide for them uh, workers. And now we lift up within our hearts our own personal petitions and needs, our gratitude and our thanksgiving, and the names of loved ones who need your abiding presence. And to your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, grace, power, and goodness, which is ours in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. And now I invite you, as you feel comfortable, to share a sign of God's peace and love and welcome. As you're wrapping it up, you may be seated. <laughs> Good to be with you. Thank you. And we'll continue our worship as we share our offerings. As you're able, please stand. Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. During this season of Lent, you call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the pastoral feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. You should have the individual uh, wafer and and uh, communion set. But as the father in the parable had a feast to welcome back his beloved child, so God gives us this feast uh, in celebration that we return unto his grace, his mercy, and uh, are strengthened uh, as we journey together. My friend, receive the body of Christ given for you. And fellow sinners saved by grace receive the blood of the Lamb shed for your forgiveness. And now may Christ's body and blood strengthen and keep you always. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Share that forgiveness, that mercy and grace uh, with others who have uh, wandered off, become disillusioned with the church, who've uh, thought the world and all its riches uh, could satisfy them. Invite uh, those who are out in the wilderness, come back unto the Lord and receive his loving welcome, his goodness and compassion. And now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace and joy and love, uh, hope, assurance, and uh, celebration at this exciting time that you have worked so hard for, you prayed about, you partnered with the Synod and with each other and with Pastor Geisen. We pray this in the name of our loving God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, before our song, just again, thank you for the privilege, the honor of being with you. I, I know, I said, keep it low key. I've only been with you a month, but uh, you got a lot of pies out there, <laughs> and they look very good. So I hope you'll be able to stay, but I hope you know how appreciative I am to the Senate and to St. Luke for let, giving me this uh, great, great privilege. And Pastor Dave, anytime you want to play for a bar mitzvah or a wedding, oh, you know. there you go. <laughs> All right, you and I had get a little group going. And <clears throat> someone said if I had an organ grinder and a monkey, I could maybe make a lot of them, and a tin cup, I could maybe keep going. <laughs> well, let's stand for our closing hymn 323 God Love the World. <laughs> Our service is ended. Let us go in peace. Exciting times await St. Luke. Jesus meets us on the way. Thanks be to God. Thank you all.